Whoa! Welcome back, Mark's Tasty Top. Ladies and gentlemen, we have several kilos of roasts. I got two, four, six, eight to do. They're nice size. Um, eight? Yeah, eight. In the machine already, I have Drovors. You can see it's all been packed on the bottom shelf. Then I've got another shelf here and another shelf at the top. Uh, UV light is good for airborne pathogens. And we got four people viewing already. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. I've only got the one machine going. So that's what we are doing now. Um, we got our area all sorted. I'm going to be popping you on. Let's uh, switch this over. There's my ugly mug. How's it? Hey, Terry. <laughs> Buddy. Right. <clears throat> if it goes off or phone drops, there'll be a crash bang wallet. Let's have a look. Woo. Gotta get that stuck in there. Can everybody see? Of course you can. Let's go up a little bit. Yeah, you're good. Right. Let's check some gloves on and get this show on the road, shall we? I think we are slightly off center there, but that's okay. Hope you've all had a good week and a few quits. And a few dollars. A few bond notes, a few puller, a few anything. Um, we got some nice roasts today. Um, this will be my last batch before Christmas. Got 30 kilos of dry horse in. And I'll have about 80 kilos of meat. Alexa, volume seven. Maybe it was already in volume seven. <laughs> Sorry if I activated your Alexis. Right. We're gonna try and keep as much fat as we can on this trip. But we are gonna still take off all this sloppy stuff. But I'm gonna try and be You can see the silvers have been sliced off these, most of it anyway. They managed to leave me a little bit there. Let's get him off. Knives have all been sharpened. Oh, come on. I've got a customer coming at half past two, so we're gonna do at least an hour of light feet. Why not? Hope you've, um, all got yourselves ready for Christmas. I've been hectic. But the good news is, I finished, my day job is over. So I'm off now for two weeks. Um, if you wanna order Biltong for the new year, or for New Year's, if you order next week, that's when you will get it. Uh, unfortunately, Christmas orders are now pretty much closed. You, if you message me, you might be lucky. I might be able to get something out for you on Tuesday. Um, but really, I've probably got over 30 orders still to do, of which will be down to probably six or seven by tomorrow night. I will process more tomorrow. I've done a load today, this morning. That's why I'm late with my live feed. So now we're splitting these two. I actually need someone here filming one day just to show you the detail in here. 
quite difficult to get in between the two muscles. Try to get it as close to the membrane as possible because there is some sinew there. See here we have a little bit of meat. That's the tiniest little bit, but you know what? It's still gonna go into the dryer. I'll hang it on with another stick of biltong. Um, I'm trying to get most or all of the sinew. I can leave a little bit of the membrane, that's not a big issue. But we got some nice fatty, I want some fatty and I want some lean this week, so be a bit of both. Because I want to make some more bites, a blow of original bites. I've just taken a batch of chili bites out last night. Um, this whole week I've been filling and emptying the machine, cutting at silly hours of the night. I haven't gone live obviously, but you have to trust me on that one. See that bit of fat? It's going to go in on this, go into the dryer. So I'm pretty much done trimming this now. There's a little bit left here. Don't have to worry about these little bits, that's fine. Now here we've got some nice fat. I'm sure you can see that. Whoa, going into the meat there. I'm taking this skirt off, as I always call it. Lots of loose fat there. I don't want this loose stuff. When you put it into the tumbler, it just comes off anyway just makes it look very messy. I'm not going to be too pedantic. I will use that word today. So, we got that nice there. We're going to square it up. Let's get the old... Um, I love this Sabatier knife. It's actually quite a... It's a beautiful blade. It's, it's quite thin. If you look at it up against the um, Victorinox, it's a little bit thinner. The Victorinox is a bit heavier. This is lighter. It's got a nice grip. It's my go-to knife, but I do use still the Victorinox. I am literally just trying to square this up now, and I want few thin pieces for dry. People that want dry fatty, that's what you get. Then we'll have a medium. We'll have a couple of thick ones and a couple of more thin ones. And someone did ask me how I, how I know what's going to be sort of soft and wet or how I know something's going to be dry I just vary the thickness and I've you know once it's made and you slice it you'll see it and you get to know over the time I've done so many now I know what to look for when I open my box of ready-made it is a nice thick piece here. I'm going to leave that thick piece. That's, that's a good, I mean, inch thick there. Or leave it inch thick. Be a bit of wet there. So, all I'm doing here now, separating. You wouldn't do this like that in Zim. You see that fold? That's a disaster waiting to happen for flies. You're inviting them to lay their eggs in there. I don't have that problem in here any time of the year. With this one now, because I've got a bit of fat there, I'm going to leave that and I'm going to do this. I'm going to go in at the bottom and I'm going to just cut across. Now, got a piece with fat, cut that in half, maybe even cut it again. I've got three nice strips there with a bit of fat on. Very nice. This will be mostly lean. 
like a hot knife through butter. Beautiful, beautiful. So let's throw some lean in on the side. And try and get as much lean as I can out of these as well. So I can do some more bites. They're my favorite thing to do. Not. They are so laborious. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the first one done. Now, there is the fat that I've cut off. Not a lot at all. Probably two, 300 grams. Maybe, maybe 200 grams. Let's get another one out. between 10 and 12 kilos. I do get the odd one that's sort of probably 14, 15 kilos. So yeah, you get a nice workout as well. This one hasn't got a great deal of fat on it, so it probably be a mostly lean one this. Let's Put this one the other way around so you can see the other side this time so that is your bottom round there top round here usually you've got your silver side here that's been cut off already very little fat on there but when i say to separate i'll show you in a minute let's first take off all this slippery stuff here idea is to try and slip the blade in just underneath the fat or the membrane without slicing your fingers and we get a nice even if you can do as much as you can my my fat trimmer that I bought was a waste of money but you know what lesson learned uh, I thought I might I haven't tried it again for quite some time I thought I might be making it easier for myself I'd still like to try they do a the slicer that they use in kebab shops is an electric slicer that can adjust thickness and I'd like to try one one day but yeah they're a bit pricey so here I'm just trying to follow the, the membrane down. You get to a certain point where you can't see it. You have to just kind of guess where it is. And separate the two. You can see I went over there. But here we can take this bit off. Just under the skin. Go along. Snip, snip. Bob's your auntie. Here you go. Here we go a bit more sinew. Always some at the top there. Off, gone. Let's just take that little bit of rubbish off the top there. There's a little bit here. I'm gonna be anal with this because it's for lean. So let's keep turning it. That's holding on there. There's a little bit of fat on this, so I'm gonna Try and keep that as well. Got some loose stuff here. I'm gonna take it off. That's too loose there. Right, let's put that aside. This is the bit of sinew you always see me cutting off. It does go all the way around, but I try and take off what I can see everything that is visible will get trimmed out when you actually slice the pieces of biltong you do see a vein in there but and when it gets sliced again you don't even see it so 
all I'm taking off now is this little bit of loose at the bottom here. Like I said, I'm going to try and be a bit more pedantic with this. I'm cutting this off with meat because there's fat on it and I want to keep that. Right, the bottom's pretty much cleaned up. See this top bit here? Very, very thin. <coughs> oh, smoker's cough, don't worry. So, use the fat, wrap it around your hand if you have to, and you'll get most of it off like that. One hit. Let's flick this around. Try and cut away from yourself. You should never cut towards yourself like I'm doing now. <laughs> uh, there's a little bit of decent yellow fat here, but it's nothing worth keeping. It's a very small amount. So it's coming off. Because I need lean, it's coming off. Again, maybe got a couple of grams of, a couple of hundred grams of fat off this, so. I'm gonna leave that bit, because I'll cut that that way. You'll see when I slice this now. I am actually gonna turn it over, because it'll be easier. Let's use the Victoria knife. I like swapping knives, it's good nice and sharp it does makes cutting pleasure anything with a touch of fat it's gonna get into the tub with the fat now I'm going quite thick it's got ever so small but you see what I mean about the line there that was that seam that will go in. Let's um, turn this on its side. Let's get the bottom off. Create yourself a nice platform for anybody that does cut their own biltong. Gives you a nice flat bottom. You see I constantly chop and change this around. I am now cutting, that's where the, the veins go, or the, the grain, so to speak. And I'm cutting across the grain. Very sharp knife today. Try and support the side that wants to fall over. Whoopsie, that's going to be a bit thin there. It's all right. Get a thin piece out of it. All right, rock and roll. So now, simply make sure you've separated. Most of that went straight through, through, through. Very nice and lean. Beautiful, beautiful. Nice Angus beef. So here, because there was a bit of fat at the bottom, I'm going to do the same as I did the last one. Cut that bottom piece off. I'm going to cut this into strips. Got a little bit of fatty there, but it's got lots of yama there too. Plenty yama. Any of these little bits go into the rubbish pile. Now we got this bottom round, we slice through that. Get ourselves a nice flat bottom, all goes into the lean pile. As soon as you've got a nice base, we slice again and we keep going. I've got one more through there and those good for stockies 
Beautiful. So, two down, six to go. Oh, this is a biggie. Oh, bogus. How many viewers have we got? Wow, six. <laughs> This is not zero, it's two. So all I do is take it out of its packaging, give it a light rinse. Any foreign objects on there, a bit of hair that they've left in there or anything, all gets washed away. Right. Oh. Smooth that knife out of the way. Rinse the hand. Oh, got a lot of slippery, gooey, congealed blood. You like gross stuff, look at that. Charming. It's going straight into the rubbish tub. It's a thing now, these people watch disgusting stuff, all this pimple popping and all that rubbish. It's absolutely disgusting. Why not come and watch me cut meat? It's even more disgusting. <laughs> Look, get nice pieces, very... This um, trimming knife works so well. It's a fish filleting knife. And I tell you what, it does the job. It's amazing. So all I do is slide in underneath that, come out the other side, bit of sawing action, boom. And here we've got a bit more congealed blood again. It's just from the packaging, cold. I don't want that on my biltong though, so it's trimmed off. It's gross. You get nothing. I say you get. My customers get nothing but quality. It counts for everything. I think I underestimated uh, all the built-on orders this week. I tell you, it's been mad. bed at midnight most nights and then up at five to get to my job fun times so here we are trimming again inside this roast try and be as careful as you can try and get as close to that membrane as you can We're near enough done this one almost perfect actually like last one I showed you. This one was almost too perfect. Now, this is a bit of sinew here at the top end that comes off. There's a little bit of meat on this, not worth keeping. Not worth keeping. Come on. So here we just trim again at the edge. Try and get just under that skin. Can be quite therapeutic. So Miss Becky Jones says. <laughs> Are you watching Bex? Maybe, maybe not. She's our future daughter-in-law, Shirley's side. She will be my daughter-in-law as well. Anyway, let's get this bit of sinew on the side here. Like I always said, there's a bit of blood there. It's going, going, gone. Let's turn it around and show you. So now, just trying to clean up this edge. Let's get that bit done. I'm being a bit barbaric. 
try and get as much of that sinew as you can. It does run all the way through there. It's another muscle this. It's two muscles. Two muscles. I sound English now. Yeah? Here we've got a very sloppy top. No good to me at all. So, I know I've got better roasts in there. Let's trim this off. Taking a bit of much nyama there. Yeah, I'm just doing it. This one's going to cost me this roast. So here I've got the skin, got the skin, I'm pulling. And I've taken it off. I don't want to take that all off. There's a bit of fat there. I'll keep that. All this sloppy stuff. It's going to be gone. I'm trying to be quite... quite good with the last bit. It is, like I said, a bit of fat here, so I cut it off with some meat and it goes into the fatty part. Right, how do I want to do this? I want to turn it over. Yeah, that's fine. Right, back to the saboteur. Let's get into the saboteur. All going into the lean pile, this. Once I get a bit of fat, it will go into the fatty pile. See now, once I start cutting into that thing, you can see the seam there. Because this roast is quite uh, uniform in the sense that, that it's straight and flat, I'm going to continue to cut this way. I do need some nice fatty stuff, so there will be some more fatty coming out. Got plenty choice today. I'm going to have more than enough to finish up my orders. And this will all be out Monday evening. We'll get spiced this now. And it'll go in today. It's not getting a whole night marination or anything. Through the tumbling process, actually pushes the spice into it. And I've found I can almost go straight from the tumbler into the machine. Um, I won't tell you if I've already done that. You would never even know. You can't taste the difference. Honest. No difference at all. Right, so we've got a very sloppy bottom round here. We're gonna get our trimming blade again. We're gonna try and go under that membrane. Try and get all this. And I've got a good piece off there. But it's a lot quicker than my trimmer. Try and be careful if you are trimming towards yourself. Sometimes it's unavoidable where you need to just kind of nip it and do that, but you don't want to end up stabbing yourself. And as I'm alive, although thousands may end up watching it, I am not going to be stabbing myself. Fame is not worth <laughs> the hours of agony. You might get someone that does that, but I ain't gonna do it. Bugger that. Right, I've trimmed 99.9% .9 of that off. I'd say we're good to go. There's very little left on here now. I'm not going to be that bad on this one. 
Which way do I start? <laughs> it's hard to decide. This is the bottom, so I'm just going to trim that off. As soon as I feel my blade start blunting, I'll put the honing, I'll run it over the honer. So now I've created a nice flat bottom. Oh, my tubs have started overflowing. That's okay. Get some other two tubs out in a minute. So, nice clean sweeps. I can feel my blade going all the way through to the board. Beautiful, beautiful. It also means you've got nice tender beef without sinew in it. Now, this would work for ostrich, blessbok, bison, kudu, snake, whatever you're making built on out of. Uh, right, let me just use another tub here just to overflow my lean into. I'm going to move my blades. A few built on hooks on the side. I'm going to move. And I'm moving tubs now. Let's move this one over here. Let's move that one over there. Ready to be weighed in a minute. Get some new tubs out. And let's get another roast. Let's do one with some nice fat, shall we? Get some fatty. Nice. This is Irish beef, actually. Are you Irish? Let me show you the top of this. Some nice fat here. Even this is a bit loose, so that'll get trimmed off. But we start with the bottom. And once again, we use the uh, skinning knife, filleting knife rather, just to take out all the sloppy stuff. It's just basically cleaning up your roast. It's known as trimming, it is trimming, it is what it is. I try to be as quick as I can, but I also try to be as safe as I can. Accidents are avoidable. In my case, it was not. <laughs> my poor parents. Uh, I was a terrible child growing up. I like to think I've made up for it in over the years. Right, so we're almost there with that now. You see what I'm saying with this? Let me show you, I'm gonna go left hand. Oh, I've never cut with my left hand before. Nah, can't do that. I'm gonna end up cutting myself. Let's turn it this way so I can use my right hand. So while you're watching, it looks like my left hand. So, Gone as close as I can there. Take that piece out. Clean that up in a minute. Let's move him out of the way. This membrane here. Snip. <laughs> Who jumped? Nobody. Right, the bottom's good. Let's flick the top over. See this? Got some congealed blood under there. It's all coming off. 
the really loose stuff, there's some nice fat here, I'm going to keep that. And I need some lean built on too, so some of this will be lean built on. Gonna have original, doing garlic and chili. Doing all flavors today because I'm low on everything. Low, low, low. Right, we are now gonna just square this up. from the top it's almost like you're slicing a loaf of bread I've often said it and while I've got a nice firm base and it's straight I will continue to cut from the top nice big slices keep the side that you haven't cut up so you're nice and firm. See if I can go the whole way. If you can't get through with the blade, just keep sawing. You don't want too much sawing action. That's how you create the folds. And I'd say we're good. Oh, that's a nice lean piece. Right, let's um Make sure this is all split. Nice. Nice. Oh. There's a lean piece, and you got a bit of a medium piece there, another lean. I've got quite a few orders for dry fatty. They will be dry and a bit fatty. If you go a little bit at the end, snip, 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 snip. There's a nice thick piece there. That piece, that piece, all gone. Right, let's get the trimmer back out. The trimmer knife. I want to get this bit at the top here. There you go. Very, very good. Right. I'm going to put on my strongest South African accent now for the South Africans. This net so South Africa. My Afrikaans is not so good, but I can be keeper. And for any uh, Mashona that are watching, Mashona Yango, I see, I see very good, very good. Kabichana Chete. But can I ziva? I think I sound just like one. A true African. <laughs> Some of you laughing at me. More than likely. 100%. Right, I'm leaving that fat on there and I don't want such small pieces. So, all I'm going to do is trim the bottom so that I've got a bit of a base. And I get more lean out of it. And now I got that there, I've got some really nice fat on here. These are gonna be relatively thick so that you get nice fatty pieces. I have a good friend who I gave some, I say gave some, he bought um, some biltong off me and I gave him my best pieces and he's gone and given them away. For a Christmas present. You know who you are. You're watching. I know you are. Anyway, uh, I'm going to send him some more nice pieces. Because I'm nice like that. Right, let's get another one. Two o'clock. We're getting good. We're good. This one has some lovely yellow fat on it. Beautiful, beautiful. What a beauty. So, all my bags that the meat 
come in will go in one side of the sink. It's like a two section sink. And they will get washed up at the end as well. So don't like my bins stinking out. Plus in the summer, <laughs> that just calls in the flies. I just heard beep beep, which means we are on two o'clock. We've got until half past. Whereas I have a break and I got a customer fetching an order. Well, swapping actually. He wanted um, some chili bites and I gave him original bites. So he's coming back to swap them. Right, so let's get this piece out of the way here. Bottom always ends up with a lot of sloppy. See, now we've done what four roasts? Look at all that fat now. So much. It's probably sitting on two kilos. Um, you do cut away, it does take some of your weight away, but you know, it's, it's all part of the process. It's why biltong is expensive. People mustn't moan too much. The time when I moan is when I see prices that are ridiculous, like 90 pounds a kilo, which I've seen in London. Quite ridiculous. Very ridiculous. Very, very ridiculous. And yet people will pay. Yeah, in London, salaries people can afford it I guess my prices are very cheap competitive so many cowboys out there now trying to make a quick buck with built on that aren't approved through council or the FSA uh, I was one of them at one point so I can't moan too much but you know what? Someone reported me and it did me a favor. Kick, gave me the, the kick up the butt I needed. So I'm gonna try and keep as much of this fat as possible. It's a really nice roast this. So I am literally gonna just trim a little bit of that bottom off there. What I call the skirt. That bit's pretty nice and clean. So let's just cut this up like it is. I'll take the end off. Let me just do the. I'm learning to do this. <laughs> I, I know that if I've done it wrong, it'll be blunter than it was. Blunter? Is that even a word? more blunt nice fatty pieces now I don't want to be too thin actually but that's really nice this has got a bit of marbling in this beef as you can see what I'm gonna do is just turn it on its side to get a better bottom on it. You can see the marbling even when I slice it across the grain. It's what gives you that sort of zebra look when you um, cut it up afterwards. Whoa, that piece is seriously thin. It's got to be a proper dry piece. Let's do some thicker bits, shall we? a bit quicker and do a couple of really nice thick pieces at the end that's a little too thick but you know what it's going in so I want to get another roast in before I have my break let's get another roast in Come on, son. Uh, 
Um, someone asked me the other day as well, do you feel crazy when you're talking while you're working? And I go, no, because I'm talking to people. Because I am talking to you guys. Unless I've got no viewers, and I'm not even sure. Hold on one minute. <clears throat> We are still alive. Good heavens. Thought I'd lost you for a second. Jeez. What happened, man? I got a message, clicked on it, and it gun went off. Okay, let's finish this roast up, shall we? So I have someone coming to fetch um, an order. There are two people coming. So, Clean this up a bit. And we'll get some fatty bits out of this one. I'm not gonna do any more. I am gonna say cheers. I am gonna say what you think I'm gonna say. And we're gonna see you the next time. Right. I have literally got three left to do. I will do them on my own. Or I may come back on live. Nah. I'm going to say cheers dudes and girls. Au revoir. Merry Christmas and a happy new year from Mark's Tasty Talk. Keep well. Don't drink and drive. Or at least drive carefully. See ya.